Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 2 to the power of 1 over x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. Do you think we can solve for x values? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. Not every equation has a solution, obviously. And this one is kind of weird because of the power, 1 over x. What is that supposed to mean? It means that, first of all, x cannot be 0 because it's not in the domain. Besides that, there are other problems. For example, normally when you get an equation like this, let's say you were given something like 2 to the power 1 over x equals 8. What would you do? You would write 8 as 2 to the third power and then set these two exponents equal to each other, right? And then from here, we're going to get something like 1 over x equals 3, which implies x equals 1 third. So that would be kind of easy to solve as long as you can get the same base. If not, then you can use logarithms. Now, what happens if you use logarithms here? Let's give it a try, right? 2 to the power 1 over x equals 1. And you can use any base. I mean, base 2 makes kind of sense because we have 2 on the left. So let's go ahead and log both sides with base 2. And that should give us the property of, you know, properties of logs give us... Uh, 1 over x from here because log 2 with base 2 is 1 and then log 1 with base 2 log 1 is 0 by the way at any base so for any base log 1 is always 0 what is that supposed to mean the reciprocal of which number is equal to 0 i mean we know that 0 doesn't have a reciprocal but what about a number whose reciprocal is 0 does that exist no because the reciprocal of the reciprocal of a number is the number itself so there's no way this can work. What does that mean? Well, if x approaches infinity, that's a different story. But that's a limit. And this is actually not about limits. We're talking about algebraic solutions here, right? But this is, as a limit, is equal to zero. So can x be infinity? No, because it's not a number. So we're stuck here. There's no solution. So what do we do? Well, we can look for solutions that are beyond the scope of this channel, which is mainly focusing on real numbers, because I have another channel that focuses on complex numbers, and it's called A plus BI. If you haven't checked that out already, go ahead and check it out. Now, what are we going to do when we don't get a meaningful solution from here? So we're going to go to the complex world, because complex world has everything. I mean, not everything, but a lot of things you know, hopefully what I'm talking about. So in the complex world, it's possible to write one as an exponential. Thanks to Euler, we have an exponential form, we have a formula, and the most beautiful equation comes from that formula because Euler is amazing by far. He's the best, in my opinion. Again, that's personal opinion. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the complexification of one. What is that supposed to mean? Well, in the complex plane, we can basically express a number with two components, like a vector. For example, if our complex number is something like 4 plus 3i, we can kind of write it like this, and this becomes z equals 4 plus 3i, where this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. So a complex number has two parts, real part and imaginary part. And obviously, when you connect it to the origin, it just makes an angle theta with the real axis, the positive real axis. And that angle is usually measured counterclockwise, which is considered the positive direction. Okay, what does that have to do with one? Well, if four plus three i can be expressed as a point on the coordinate system like this, obviously vice versa, then we should be able to express one as well. If you can write, I should probably switch these around because that makes more sense. So four plus three i can be written as four comma three. What about one, right? Well, one is one plus zero i, so it should be expressed as one comma zero. Let's go ahead and take a look. It is one comma zero is right here. So, and the distance from zero, from zero is obviously one unit, which gives us the absolute value or the modulus of one. Right, So any complex number, Euler said, can be written as r times e to the i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the argument or, or the angle. 
Okay, great. So that's awesome. And one can be done that way too. But what is the angle, right? That's the million dollar question. Maybe not really, but there seems to be no angle between, because they overlap, right? They coincide. So what's the angle? Zero radians, zero degrees. Let's go with radians, zero radians. But you don't want to just say zero because what if I just go make one round brings me to the same point. So it could be two pi radians as well because two pi radians is the same as zero radians. Well, sort of, right? So we can now write one as one times e to the power i times zero plus two pi n. Great. Now, you're not going to do this every time, trust me, because this one is not necessary, and the zero is not necessary either. So, there's a better way to write it, and it is 2 pi n i. So, whenever you use this, e to the power 2 pi n i, or whenever you see something like this, that means 1. Or if you need to complexify 1, you can go ahead and use this exponential. Isn't that nice? Great. What about the left-hand side? Great. No, no worry about it. So, let's go ahead and do the replacement first. Now, we have a 2 here and an e here. Remember what I said about the bases? They need to be the same, right? So can we change this to base e? Absolutely. If you consider the identity, 2 equals e to the power ln 2 because a equals, not a, a equals e to the power ln a. So that's an important identity that you should definitely know. So now we can go ahead and replace two with that. That gives us e to the power ln two to the power one over x equals e to the power two pi n i. Okay, so we're very close. Now what are we supposed to do? Multiply the exponents e to the power ln two divided by x equals e to the power two pi n i. Now we can go ahead and natural log both sides or just focus on the coefficients, I mean the exponents I meant. We can go ahead and set them equal to each other. And from here, we should get the solution, right? Yeah. Cross multiply or just switch these around because they are being multiplied. X becomes ln2 divided by 2 pi and i. Of course, we have to do a little bit of work on this because you don't want i in the denominator. Multiply by negative i. And then you're going to get something like this. Negative i ln2 divided by... Now, this is negative i squared. Oops, I forgot to say. i is the square root of negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. Something that you should never ever forget. So that gives us a positive 1. Because if i squared is negative 1, negative i squared is positive 1. So we get 2 pi n from here. And that should be the answer. By the way, n is an integer. Okay, don't forget that. But of course, n should not be 0. Because if n is 0, we're in trouble. The problem comes from the fact that, if you remember, we wrote this as 2 to the power 0, right? You don't want this to be 0 because then we're stuck and we don't get a solution. Now, let's go ahead and see if I did not forget to include the results from Wolfram Alpha. Looks like I didn't, so let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, by the way, our solution one more time, if you didn't see it, negative i ln 2 divided by 2 pi n. Negative i ln 2 divided by 2 pi n. Well... Well, from alpha just uses this weird notation log for ln, but ln is more appropriate for natural logarithm. In my opinion, I know many textbooks use it, college professors use it, but who cares? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.